Welcome to Your Family Dog, a podcast dedicated to helping families love living with dogs. Here are your hosts, Julie Fudge-Smith and Colleen Pilar. Hi, and welcome to Your Family Dog. I'm Julie Fudge-Smith, and today Colleen Pilar has a minor family emergency and can't make it, but I have a special guest, Dr. Jim Carlson, who's a veterinarian in Columbus, Ohio. He is a 1993 graduate of the Ohio State University College of Veterinary Medicine, and he began his veterinary career doing mostly Western or conventional medicine. As with many veterinarians, he became dissatisfied with some of the responses he would get from the traditional approach, so slowly he began to integrate other types of treatments, such as nutritional medicine, using products like glandulars and whole body supplements from Standard Process. He began practicing traditional homeopathy, and in 2003 added homotoxicology, I hope I said that right, to his repertoire. In, 19, er, in 2004, he attended the Chai Institute to be trained in traditional Chinese medicine and acupuncture and has been certified since 2005. In 2006, he became certified by the Healing Oasis Wellness Center and by the American Veterinary Chiropractic Association in veterinary spinal manipulative therapy in 2007. So he has a general practice called Lifetime Pet Wellness, and they've added laser therapy and pulsed magnetic field therapy to their repertoire. I will say that I have used pretty much everything that you offer, I think, Dr. Carlson, on my dogs. I have used acupuncture yes. and uh, chiropractic and laser therapy and pulse magnetic field and ozone treatments, and um, we've used a variety of supplements from you. So um, I have found that it's been really beneficial as a supplement to my dog's wellness. But I am a bit curious about what, what drove you um, towards it. What was dissatisfying about Western medicine for you? Well, when I, first, when I first graduated, I really didn't know anything about integrative medicine. And I, I really didn't even know it existed. I hadn't even been to a chiropractor myself. Um, <clears throat> And I certainly could have used one after car accidents. But I was actually surprised to find out uh, Ohio State actually had somebody who was, when I was in vet school, had somebody certified in acupuncture, but n no one said anything about it. No one said a word. Wow. Uh, That's kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't accepted at the time. But so I went into, uh, um, you know, I, I went in uh, with my first jobs. Um, doing what everybody does, doing your conventional medications, your surgery, your, your dentistry. And, and you definitely are helping patients when you're doing that. Um, but to me, I, I, I started seeing some of these charts for these animals that were, that, that's when we had written charts, not, not computers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, back in the good old days, when we actually used pen and paper, you mean? Yeah, yeah. So, but I, 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 I started looking at some of these charts that were, you know, an inch or two thick for some of these patients. And I, I just wondered if there was something else that could be done, um, especially earlier in life, that, that might help us avert some of these issues or, or something when the issue does arise, is there something that can make us, uh, help us actually cure the pet or, or, or at least make them much healthier and not have all these different medications and then they, then you put on then you have to put on other medications that will help the side effects of those medications and and so on and so on so right so you get this accumulated effect of of medications and they start interfering with one another and pretty soon you're not even treating the original problem with the dog you're treating all the residual problems that happen from this accumulation of side effects and, right. and so one of the things that I think is frustrating sometimes, I think, for, for a lot of veterinarians is that on, on some level, you're just treating symptoms. You're not treating the underlying organic cause of the problem with traditional medicine. And so I think that that's one of the reasons why a lot of people turn to alternative medicine because they feel like this, we've tried everything and we're not reaching what we need to reach, which is the underlying cause. Now, do you find that some of the alternative medicines are, are yeah. better at addressing underlying causes? I, I would say there's, well, the other, and that kind of goes to the other, uh, the other challenge that I found in practice was that I, I, 
I hate hearing that there's there's nothing that we can do. Just take your pet home and 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 you know to to make them comfortable for the next month. Right. Uh, um, so I I feel that there are some things that that we can that integrated medicine definitely excels over just conventional medicine. Um, like I, I've got a dog that comes in now. It's a shepherd. Um, was it has a it's in liver failure, so it's, and its liver is very small, and it has a shunt, what they call a shunt, where the mm-hmm. the blood. What the liver does is a large pore. Well, it does many things, but one of the main things it does is it, when you digest your food or absorb the things that are in your your gastrointestinal tract, it goes to the liver, and the liver filters that out. Mm-hmm. And then that, after it filters out, then it goes up to the heart. Well, if your liver is small. And and that that the body makes channels around that, so it's called a shunt. So it actually bypasses the liver without getting filtered, and it goes back into the body. So I have a so the shepherd came in, and he had a small liver, had um, these shunts, and was told by uh, one of the specialty clinics here in Columbus, basically take him home and. And uh, he's probably got about a month. Mm. And I think I think we're out eight months now, and he's he's got his weight back. He's got he's eating well. Um, Wonderful. He's, he's doing phenomenal. And if you uh, it goes back to sort of that what they call that innate intelligence. If you give that body what it needs to heal, mm-hmm. then you can fix a lot of issues. So, what kind of uh, what did you do for the shepherd in particular? Um, well, we usually we'll start with diet, do, do something, some sort of liver diet, whether it's homemade, um, or whether it is a commercial brand. I, I prefer homemade over commercial, but, um, for this guy, we did both and then, um, put him on a bunch of, um, all standard process supplements, uh, some Chinese herbs and some homeopathics. And um, he was also getting nosebleeds, so he was on an herb for bleeding. Okay. And um, so, yeah, so he's doing phenomenal, um, and, and we're, we're real happy with how he does. That's just one example. The liver has amazing regenerative capabilities if you give it the right stuff. Oh, that's interesting to know. So... um One of the things that um, I have found is that the chiropractic adjustments that you have done have made a big difference in just the overall comfort level of my dogs. And every time you adjust one of my dogs, I'm thinking, I wish he did human medicine because you are so gentle (laughs) in your adjustments. Um, But one of the things that I think is is that people don't think about is, is the maintenance, is that you can actually maintain your dog's health and prevent stuff by having regular things like chiropractic adjustments and uh, throw in some acupuncture. I know with Bingley, acupuncture was really um, essential in helping him through his cancer treatment to be more comfortable and to help his appetite and just, you know, decrease some of his pain. Um, Chiropractic can be more than just maintenance, though. I know that Zuzu had her very first one, not from you, but from another one, at three weeks of age. And that is what allowed her to bend properly and feed better because she hadn't been eating well. So could you talk a little bit about some of the things that, that might apply to your average family dog that would help them to be more comfortable, healthier, and maybe even live longer? The integrated medicine, you... you think of the whole body you think of and and i think of i try to do long term i don't i try to get them uh in before we have these big major right illnesses or that you know now we've got um metastatic cancer all over things like that it's better to start as a puppy or a kitten um but i'll i'll always start with diet first um i think diet is very important as far as getting the most natural possible diet that you can, um, whether that's, uh, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of raw food. Oh, um, I am too, actually. Yeah. So I, I, I love raw food. It's, it's not for everybody that certain, uh, you know, households shouldn't have raw food in it. If, if you've got anyone immunocompromised or, 
right. feel like an old patient that's never had raw food before might not be a good idea. But so raw food or, or homemade uh, food. Um, and then uh, I also feel that I think most dogs and cats should be on uh, probiotics and enzymes. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and probably uh, extra fish oils or omega threes of, sub- of some sort. Um, probably not flaxseed because I don't think they digest flaxseed very well. But so I'll do that, and then and then um, then I I look at chiropractic as the next one or okay. spinal. It, we're really supposed to call it spinal manipulative therapy, but most people don't know what that is. So uh, it's a form of chiropractic. Uh, right, and uh, because with that, then you're you're basically you're keeping the joints moving well. When the joints move well, then the nerve output and input um, to the spine is normal. The brain gets is stays healthier. The internal organs stay healthier. Um, the endocrine system stays healthier. Um, and the funny thing is that I I first learned. I went with uh, acupuncture before chiropractic. It, okay. I, it was, I don't know, to me, it, 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 was, it didn't really make as much sense to me as, as acupuncture. Uh, but since then, my, my view is reversed. I will almost always do chiropractic or adjusting first um, before I'll add in the acupuncture. Just, it, it depends on the case, but um, I just think that there's, there's so much that, that keeping the 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 spine and, and the other joints moving well and in mm-hmm. proper a proper confirmation um, right is is best for health so well and I think that uh, when you're talking about I think that chiropractic is is so wonderfully juxtaposed with um, with diet I think they work so well together because the fish oil I think is just really critical for you know fluid joints and um, so then the the chiropractic keeps the joints fluid too that I think they work really well together and I think that that is the be- the real beauty of integrative medicine is it truly is integrative that it is looking at the holistic approach to the dog and looking at what are the things that we can do to work together rather than pinpointing one specific thing that we're going to um, you know look at which is the more traditional medicine more traditional approach in western medicine is we have a skin problem rather than we have a health problem or we have, you know, arthritis. So let's go straight to Rimadyl, where there might be other things that we could do that are not going to have some of the same side effects. On the other hand, I don't think that you have thrown Western medicine right out the window. Um, so I think that you have a very good, do a very good job of, of integrating integrative medicine into Western medicine. So can you address that a little bit more about how you use integrative medicine to enhance more traditional medicines? Or treatments? Yeah, the it, there there are several different um, say forms of integrative medicine. What people think about, and and that can be more of a holistic, where you you, you look at you use all the different modalities uh, like we do, but you have other people who might just focus on acupuncture or might just focus on homeopathy. Um, you know, so there's there's many different ways of doing it. Our we do all three because I think especially uh, dentistry has become really big you have to keep the mouth healthy if it's mm-hmm. if it's loaded with bacteria the the kidneys are going to be strained uh, throughout the life you, you mm-hmm. could end up going into failure you could um, there's argument that it, you know the bacteria could seed a valve on the heart and then you end up with a heart infection um, things like that so um, so we always add in uh, den- dentistry is very big, but the as far as different things that we will um, integrate, I you know I try to for uh, for my pain control I might I a lot of times I use a homeopathic with tramadol because tramadol is a pain reliever but not mm-hmm. an anti-inflammatory. Yeah, and it, so it uh, so I'll use a homeopathic that's an anti-inflammatory. With this, with with the pain medication, that can seem to help um, for a lot of dogs and cats. Um, the other, I would say, is certain cancers. Um, so, especially lymphoma. Lymphoma is one. 
where uh, a lot of integrated people believe that lymphoma is going to respond better to chemotherapy support the patient with integrative means to keep the side effects down. Uh, right. Because with lymphoma, they go in for their first treatment. The, lymphs, the lymph nodes are down the next day. Uh, mm-hmm. Almost back to normal in a lot of cases. So I would say that's, a, that's one. Um, it, kidney disease, many of those. We, we, we will always, I always look at what can I add, add in that's going to help not just cover the symptoms, but like you mentioned earlier, hit the base of the problem. Right. Sure. Right. Well, I was thinking some of the other things that, that we did, like when Bingley was diagnosed with cancer, um, we added in the ozone treatment, which I think was really helpful and um, in, in making him more comfortable, but also just helping him recover from and not be as severely affected by the chemotherapy as he was. Um, he, he really handled his chemo well, and I think part of it was because I continued with the acupuncture and the chiropractic, and we added in a few other things. So you want to talk about some of your more unusual treatments, like the um, the ozone treatment and um, the pulse magnetic treatment, what those are and how you use those? Yeah, yeah. The, I, I would... I would put in there also laser a lot, of, but a lot of people are familiar or getting more from right. laser medicine. Um, the the ozone is it's where we take medical grade oxygen and turn it into ozone. You don't use we don't use room air for ozone generation because you make a lot of toxic compounds. Um, the interesting thing is that in most other countries. Uh, or many other countries, at least, it, it, ozone is a standard of care. Is it? Where That's in the U.S., it's still yeah. So uh, where in the U.S., it's still considered um, integrative, and, and probably the reason why m- most people say the reason is because no one can patent it. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the and and actually the first. There was uh, there were ozone hospitals here in the U.S. Um, I believe in Tesla. I believe was the first one who made a commercial ozone generator. Um, really? Yeah. So it, it, had no idea. <laughs> yeah. So it and it's so uh, you know Spain, Russia, uh, uh, Cuba, Italy. Um, Many of these countries, Germany, many of these countries are, are using ozone all the time, especially since we're, be, we're coming up against some of the superbugs that are resistant to a lot of bacteria, antibiotics. Uh, right, which is so, pretty scary stuff. Yes, yes. And, and so ozone, as far as administration, it can be done many different ways. Uh, probably the most common is... Um, Probably the most common is rectal insufflation, where it's almost given like an enema. Okay. Uh, the second one is uh, the auto hemotransfusion, which is what we did with Bingley. And right. We, we, I think we did both, actually. Uh, yeah, we did we do both. Draw out. The, yeah, the with that one, you draw out some blood. Uh, you you put an anticoagulant a coagulant in it so it doesn't clot. Um, dilute it with saline, and you treat it with ozone, <clears throat> treat it with ultraviolet light, and then you give it back to the patient. Um, other other ways that can be used topically, you can we can uh, ozonate saline, so you could use it in the eyes or given um, subcutaneously. Um, so there's, there's several different ways to use it. And what does ozone do for a patient? So it. it it does. It does many things. Um, but basically, it, it's cancer hates oxygen. One of the theories that pe- that we get cancer is because we don't have enough oxygen in the tissues. Okay. Um, it it's effective against fungus, uh, bacteria. Um, it stimulates if you have areas of the immune system that are hyper stimulated. So mm-hmm. so like an autoimmune disease. Oh, okay. It can it can help it can help modulate the immune system so it can bring that that excess immune system down. But at the same time, if you have deficient areas of the immune system, it can uh, stimulate the immune system to bring it 
back up. So it, it, it works to modulate, not make excessive or anything like that. Right, which is why it can be used, I think, in conjunction with something like chemotherapy, because it's not really directly interfering with, with chemotherapy. It's supporting it. Is that correct? Right, right. Okay. When you get the, the chemotherapy, the, 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 well, the oncologist will say that, that chemotherapy, you shouldn't be giving antioxidants with it because it works with, uh, it works by creating oxidant, oxidation species, I guess. But um, there are several integrative uh, oncologists that will use antioxidants with chemotherapy, and the patients, mm-hmm. they, they seem to stay healthier. Uh, mm-hmm. The One of the things that ozone, it sounds kind of odd, but because ozone, you think of ozone as this big oxidizer, um, but what it actually does is it, one of the things it does helps the body's antioxidant system improve and, and normalize. So if we're short on antioxidants, um, it, it'll help bring that level up naturally. Um, so it does, it just, it does so many things. Um, it, it does sound like it does a lot of amazing things. It, it seems to, as though it works with the body, with what the body needs, that's what it's going to work with. And that's pretty cool. Exactly. And it's, it's, not, a, it's not necessarily a, a cure-all um, by itself. It works, it tends to work best, in, in my mind, with, uh, with, with an integrative plan. You know, when you right. Do other things, right. So, well, so many of these things work better in conjunction with one another. Like, uh, you know, the joint manipulation works better if your dog's on uh, fish oil, and um, yeah. you know, ozone's going to work better when it's in conjunction with with things that are going to support the body in other ways. And certainly, a good diet um, with you know appropriate proteins and all the other things that dogs need are going to main help to maintain a dog. One of the things that um, I think why when both of my dogs got cancer last year, why they did as well as they did was because underneath the underlying cancer were two very healthy dogs who'd been on good nutrition all of their lives and supplements. And so I think that when you can build a healthy dog underneath, that when things like cancer happen or other um, illnesses happen, then you have a much better fighting chance of having some of these integrative medicines work as well as the traditional medicines work because you've got a healthy dog underneath all of this. And that's the whole point, I think, behind integrative medicine is to produce the healthiest dog possible underneath so that when things happen, you are going to be much more likely to be successful in counteracting it. Is, is, that, is that a good summary? Yeah, I mean, you are... You've got two main things that that are make us who we are and one is genetics and one is environment and i i put in environment i put uh good diet yes i would too yeah. so you can't really do a whole lot about your genetics but you you but when you have a better diet as, or in better environment less toxins that sort of thing then you get less of those bad genes being read. So our goal mm-hmm. is that you, you, you stay healthier longer. And, um, and I, I think um, those, I don't know if anyone, anyone's ever heard of Pottinger's Cats, the Pottinger's Cats study. No, I, at um, least I have not. So, that, so Pottinger's Cats, a great read as far as if, if, for anyone who's, well, it's an interesting read. I won't say it's a great read, but it's if anyone basically looking at if there's a real benefit to raw food. Okay. And he basically did a study with cats that um, he was looking at one thing and and found out that his colony cats were getting sicker uh, when they were on this processed food. So then he uh, he, uh, made it into a study. And basically over four to five five generations of cats um, eating processed food found that they started becoming unhealthy having a lot of recurrent health and health issues and each generation was sicker um, versus the comparing that to a group that is just being fed raw food uh-huh they stayed healthy and maintained their cat-like appearance um, so and then um, we found that it takes 
several generations when you switch that over them over to Roth, it takes several generations for them to right. they can get back to health. Um, and that's that's one of the arguments right now with humans is that the generation, you know, our young generation coming up now is now that fourth, fifth generation of Pottinger's cats and it's yeah. uh, of says food you see how what what our health does and and, and um, you know, I, I, I don't know how it, I, I think that way as a humans as well we're and, and with pets that are on this this processed foods for so long they're just getting sicker and sicker with each generation yeah that makes a certain amount of sense it was interesting a, a friend of mine was when they renovated their kitchen they pulled um, a counter out and what they found behind the counter was a grocery list and this must have been from like the 1950s but she what was really interesting is what was on it was milk flour eggs fruit lettuce meat there was not a single processed food on the entire list yeah and so i think to myself wow we have really changed because how many of our you know lists are you know cornflakes and bread not not the flour to make the bread but you know the bread <laughs> and uh so i i think that it's a there's a lot to be said and i think Twinkies. you know yeah that's right i also think too that that one of the problems with with uh, current health is is not just even if you were to eat raw i mean what are we feeding our cows we're feeding them corn that's not what they're supposed to eat they're supposed to eat grass and so i think sometimes we are really altering the food chain by what we're feeding the things that we eat and that oh, yeah. can make a big difference into how we process they, foods and i don't know i don't know if um if you're familiar with mercola uh no. but Mer- mercola is uh, integrated medicine now he sends his, he sells his own products but he also is has some really neat articles, um, and then his counterpart, uh, Dr. Becker, is on the veterinary side. Right. Um, so she's, and she also has some really neat stuff. Uh, they have they have newsletters that you can um, get emailed to you. Um, but he did he he really looks at um, Alzheimer's and those uh-huh. the of he he thinks that one of the reasons one of the conf- why. Alzheimer's is growing so rapidly in humans is because of these these massive cow lots and 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 the stuff that they're being fed. So, huh. And Chinese and in Chinese medicine too, the beef is is usually you know more more neutral if they're fed grass. Mm-hmm. It's if it's cattle and, and that have been fed uh, just grains and corn, the energetics are more warmer. To hot, so even the Chinese have even seen this. Excuse me, in food gener- uh, um, energetics. Wow, that is, that's very very interesting. Um, what we'll do for our listeners is we always have some follow up notes and links. So we will get links to some of Dr. McCullough's and Dr. Becker's articles. If you want to send me those, I'll make sure they get on our website, as well as we'll get a link to Pottinger's cat because that people might find that to be interesting as well. Mm-hmm. Um, we, um, the one last thing I just, I wanted to talk to you about was the idea of what is the, the pulse magnetic? Cause I had not, I had no idea what that was about when I came in and I did find that it helped with lameness in, uh, in Bingley. So if you wanted to just talk about that and, and we'll wrap it up. Yeah. That, uh, pulse magnetic, um, uses healthy frequencies of magnetic energy. And there are, a few, there are many different uh, brands and versions of it out there, um, ranging from um, some people say it's better just to have the magnetic energy of the Earth, you know, as your stimulating energy, which I don't believe because we get that all the time, um, or you use stronger pulses. And so, so um, what what this does is it uses a a pulsing that gives you a pulse of energy. And you can adjust it, um, the strength and the quickness of the pulses. And uh, what, it, what when you do that, you're, the, you're altering body chemistry mm-hmm. that eventually ends up, it actually ends up doing several things that, uh, clinically anyways, that laser does. Uh, mm-hmm. so, it, so it'll decrease swelling, um, decreases pain, 
increases blood supply, increases healing. Um, it's it's what I prefer to use on my lower back when it's bothering me. Uh, mm-hmm. It's it's not contraindicated in cancer or tumors like laser is. Lasers generally mm-hmm. thought to be to not be used anywhere you know that there might be cancer. Um, right. The so it, it has a lot of different effects uh, that can work similar, like I said, clinically to laser, but uh, it just uses different methods to get there. Um, and it's been used for years. It's it's. I would say it's probably more common in the horse industry. Yes, yes, I would. I had used it on horses before I used it on my dog, and I didn't realize what we were doing. <laughs> yeah, you can, you, I mean, some of these units, uh, even like ours, you could, you could put on a horse to where they're, they're getting muscle contractions where they bounce. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, small animals don't put up with that, so you use small, <laughs> small levels of energy. <laughs> yes. Um, but I have, um, I had a lot of agility people come in, do it before an agility core uh, trial. Um, because it also, you've also got the the um, the quantum physics side of it where it's imparting an energy. Uh-huh. Right? So a lot of people feel that they, they feel more energetic. and Or if you do it on a pet, they, the pets feel more energetic um, at the same time. So there's some things in there we probably can't totally explain unless you believe in the quantum physics. So. All right. Well, I don't think this is time for the quantum physics lecture. Um, I certainly know I could not explain quantum physics. <laughs> but thank you very much for for coming along and uh, talking with us about alternative medicine, I think, or integrative medicine, which I think is a much better expression, a way of describing it. Um, I think most people think of it as alternative, but integrative, I think, is a much better way of looking at it because it's the whole idea of, of integrating things into your pet's um, health care that will help to maintain it um, and make it healthier for a longer period of time. And certainly we all feel our cats and dogs live far too short a lives and anything we can do to make them more comfortable and healthy and live a longer life is something I think a lot of people are interested in taking a look at. If um, I'm lucky, I have lots of wonderful veterinarians in my area, but uh, for those of our listeners who um, may not be as close to a, an urban area as we are, is there a place that they can look up um, holistic practitioners, acupuncturists, or chiropractic doctors? Is there any kind of a national online directory or anything like that where they might be able to find somebody? There there are a couple. Um, you can do the ahvma.org, which is the... Okay. And that, that's the Holistic Veterinary Medical Association. I, okay. I, hope, I hope that's the right one. But you could also just Google American Holistic Veterinary Medical association um you can also do um tcvm.com is the chi institute and they have a locator okay. on theirs uh, okay great the, uh the healing oasis dot i think it's dot edu uh okay that's where i learned chiropractics he has a list of members uh you know certified members there so they're Few, few different places to go. Well, great. We'll make sure all those get on our website as well, and we will also link to your website. So, for those of us in, uh, for those people here in Ohio, mm-hmm. they'll be able to find the Lifetime Pet Wellness Center, which I'm so glad I found. I was wondering if I could add in one one little thing too about sure, about, sure. So, um, with the integrated medicine, you're going to find there are some challenges as far as number one, got to get the medications into the pets. So whoever you're working with, or and and if these are being prescribed, please let your that person know if you're not able to get the medications in, so they can come up with something else, like a you know find a, ch- a solution. That's one of the challenges. The other thing I'd say is that there's so okay. many things out there on the internet, and some of them are mm-hmm. garbage, and others are are good. Um, the Usually, if you're paying, if it's very cheap, if it's not a homeopathic and it's very cheap, it's probably, there's a good chance that the reliability or quality is not going to be as good uh, because the cost is usually not them just trying to get more money from you, but it's it's that they're um, 
they're likely putting more effort into quality control testing and toxicity testing right. and making sure the active ingredient is in the herb and things like that. So uh, don't don't jump on to the first one that looks great. You know, get get recommendations from other people who have used it. Um, uh, maybe even contact the company. Make sure that they do quality control and make sure these things aren't loaded up with heavy metals or something like that. So. Well, that's pretty- right. And as is usual, it's it's kind of you get what you pay for. You're going to buy cheap. You're probably not going to get what it is you're, you're really right. looking for. So those are two great pieces of advice. And um, one of the things I learned from you is, is um, I now use um, all-natural peanut butter to distribute pills to my dogs. I no longer use any with <laughs> um, hydrogenated vegetable oil in it. So um, it's a little bit of a soupier mess, but they, they we get it down. Yeah. We get it down. So... Awesome. So thank you for that. Um, I was I was like, okay, well, I guess they can have they can have the same peanut butter I get. So we have this big jar that's just the doggy peanut butter, but it's pretty good stuff. So thank you for that, and uh, thanks again for coming on your family dog. And you have a great rest of your day. Thanks for having me. You too. Thanks for listening to your family dog. Got questions? Interesting ideas? Colleen and Julie would love to hear them. Call 614-349-1661 or visit www.yourfamilydogpodcast.com to share your thoughts.